With F1's new 2022 regulations, there's already been plenty of variation in how the cars look. Engineers, designers and technicians don't yet know the best way forward with the new rules, leading to a range in geometries all around the car. One of the biggest pieces of the puzzle, if not the biggest, lies in the new floors. F1 moved away from the flat-bottomed floors to herald a return to ground effects, bringing in Venturi tunnels to generate downforce. But how do they work and what are the key developments? Let's take a look, starting with Number 1. How do the new Venturi tunnels work? Arguably the biggest change to the 2022 cars is one we've not really seen a whole lot of. The traditional flat floors are gone, replaced by a floor that makes use of Venturi tunnels to produce what's known as ground effect. Think of them as two long cord wings underneath the car, with a convex curvature that gets close to the floor before gradually moving up to allow space for the airflow to expand. The airflow enters the floor space behind the front wheels, which is then compressed and accelerated at the point where the gap between the car's floor and the ground is smallest. Thus, the airflow moves through the floor at a higher velocity, introducing a huge pocket of low air pressure relative to the top side which allows the car to hunker down and grip onto the road. With the new floors, the new generation of F1 cars have slightly different properties. They have much more downforce in the high-speed corners, as they're able to cling to the road much more deadly than the old machinery. But without the high level of airspeed, they might be a bit more glacial when it comes to the low-speed corners. In those corners, the drivers may be less inclined to attack the curbs as heavily as they previously did, mainly to preserve the seal of the floor and protect its structure. Number 2. Is rake no longer a thing? When comparing the 2022 cars to their counterparts from last season, there's one clear difference between them, other than how they look, of course. Jumping back to the beginning of 2021, and rake was a hot topic among headlines. Would F1's new floor rules benefit the high rakers like Red Bull or the low rakers like Mercedes? So, could one assume that rake would still play a big role this year? Well, not quite. Like a dilapidated garden, 2022 cars have no rake. There's no clear difference in incline between the front and the rear, and that's down to the composition of the new floor. Adding in rake would compromise the seal around the new floor, leaving it susceptible to leaking airflow under the car needed to produce downforce, or allowing turbulence in which will cut the underbody flow velocity. F1 Managing Director of Mode Sport Ross Braun commented on the lack of rake, stating that the high-rate cars looked a bit silly, sort of perched on their nose and waddling their asses in the air. He added, They never really looked like a racing car should look, so I think these ones will look a lot better out on the track as well. One deductive leap one could draw is that Mercedes would be better suited to the new rules owing to their experience with a low-rake car over the old high-rake concept of Red Bull. But given everybody starting with a clean sheet of paper and the floors are so different, that shouldn't really be a factor for either team. Number 3. Ripples and Curls One thing that's hotted up already in the floor development stakes is how the teams are addressing the design of their floor edges. Let's get super technical here, there's cutty bits, curly bits and ripply bits. But without turning F1 floor design into a Dr. Seuss poem, let's touch on what they're for. If we take a look at the cars during the Friday wet weather testing at Barcelona, you can see a certain degree of vorticity around the edges of the floor. By building and releasing vortices, you can build a barrier between the edge of the floor and unwanted airflow and turbulence, which tries to sneak into the Venturi tunnels. With cuts, you can release a vortex on that corner. With curls, you can shape or place vortices. And with ripples, Mercedes can replicate that effect with a continuous shape. There will undoubtedly be more developments in this area as time goes on, they'll all be for the same purpose in protecting the underbody flow. Number 4. Flexing Floors and Mercedes Quick Fix Following last season's controversy over flexing wings, there were suggestions that teams might try and get the floors to flex in the 2022 rules, bringing the sides of the floor closer to the ground to have a better way of creating a closed system within the Venturi tunnels. But the effect of porpoising on the main straight might complicate things a little bit. Teams want to ensure the best seal around the floor on high-speed corners, which would generally inform the point at which any flex in the floor begins. However, with a more closed-off tunnel under the floor, the increased acceleration of airflow underneath can bring forward the point at which the car begins to porpoise, so it's a bit of a catch-22. One of the quick fixes Mercedes implemented at the rear part of the floor was by adding a tie rod to brace it, aiming to reduce its flexibility. If Mercedes has found that the bolt-on components work, then it might opt to build in greater strength into the layup of the floor. But that comes with a weight penalty, and with so many of the teams struggling to meet the minimum weight limit, it isn't quite a no-brainer to do so. Number 5. Bargeboards without bargeboards With bargeboards effectively removed from the 2022 regulations, teams have had to find alternate means of diverting airflow outwards and keeping tyre wake away from the entrance points of the floor. The main component being used is the outer strake of the floor, 
built into a concave shape to divert wake away. Some teams have opted to extend this vertically, exposing the upper edge to also allow the generation of a vortex, which can also be used to energise airflow and produce a stronger seal around the floor. Red Bull, for example, has cut out a small corner on top to strengthen the airflow passing down over the top of the floor. We'll no doubt see more variety in this area as the season progresses, assuming the non-barge boards provide the ideal effect intended, even if they're not quite as effective as the carbon monstrosities of recent years. However, in the trade-off to improve racing and reduce the dirty air effect, it'll be a welcome swap for the greater good. After the opening running at Barcelona, there's no doubt that there'll be some cross-pollination in ideas surrounding the floor, and teams will begin to copy each other's best bits. There might even be further changes at Bahrain's test, as many of the designers and engineers fancied keeping their cards close to their chest at the opening official shakedown event. One thing's for sure, there's plenty of room for development with these all-new Formula One cars.